All right, today I'm gonna share a very interesting video with you, which I find fascinating. And anybody who cares about dogs or dog psychology or how dogs think, you'll find it fascinating too, I hope. So I put up, you know, videos in the past. Will your dog protect you naturally? So meaning, will they protect your property, your house, or yourself without any training? So today <laughs> I'm going to show you a giant Rottweiler that I consider a bully. So I've known this dog for years. He had a tendency in the past to intimidate people. A lot of people still today are very scared of him. He postures people a lot. He likes to impose himself. So if somebody's petting him, all of a sudden he'll stop and he'll look and he'll give you that eye that it might be coming. Right, so people would be petting him in the past and all of a sudden he'll get really still, put his tail posture, lick his lips, right? Stress behavior, but this was his way of being a bully. So he would pick on people just to try to show people that he was a tough guy. You know, growl at you while you're petting him, and he'll give you that low grumble, just trying to intimidate everybody. But at heart, I know he's not a tough guy. He's not one of those genetic tough guys like the other Rottweiler would do in Chapel. You got the remote? Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, but everybody will have the impression that this guy is a tough guy because of the way he does the things he does, right? So, and if he does snip at you, he'll come, he'll snip at you. You know, he'll, he'll really threaten you. So I thought this would be a great thing to show because we've never done this before. So I'm gonna have Moshi, my apprentice. Drogo has never met Moshi before. Doesn't know him, never saw him. So I thought this would be a great way to just for all of us, because even the owners don't know what he would do if somebody just walked in the house that he doesn't know, you know, or <laughs> attack the owner. So we want to see really what this guy would do, because we're always talking about without proper training, most dogs, no matter what breed or how tough people think the dog is, they are not going to follow through on attacks. So. We're going to start here where Ben is going to be upstairs in one of the rooms and Drogo is left out upstairs on the balcony where on the second story where he can see clearly the front door and who walks in. So in this clip first, we're going to see what Drogo does if Moshi just walks in the house. Now. I want to say this too because a lot of people who watch these things if they don't have a proper experience with working with this kind of thing they would think that the dog's reaction is going to be not natural or normal if the person is wearing a suit of some kind or whatever it is. Generally most dogs don't care, it doesn't matter, wear whatever you want suit, helmet, which Moshi's going to have on just in case the guy actually does come down and try to maul him because you do not want to fight a 130, 140 pound Rottweiler. So just in case Moshi's going to get all geared up for safety, but that generally does not matter to most dogs. They're going to bite you. They're going to bite you. So right now we're going to see what happens when Moshi just enters the house without the owners, just like he just walked in the house randomly.
baby. Come on. Good boy. Come on, good boy. Come on. So, Drogo was upstairs and you heard him growl, right? But he would not come down and he was not going to engage with Moshi. Moshi could have walked around the house, taken the TVs, done whatever he wanted, right? Drogo was not coming down to stop him from entering or going to take whatever he wanted to take. Now, again... <laughs> The owners usually lock Drogo up when guests come over, just in case, right? So, this is just showing you, this is a guy who really has scared most of the world, thinking he's a tough guy. And when it comes down to it, he did not want to go downstairs and have anything to do with it. Now, because of that, we're going to switch the scenario. Now, we're going to have Moshi subtly go at the owner and see what Drogo does. Yeah, he's a little bigger than Chuck. Yeah. yeah. So. Drogo! He's not threat for protection, right? So what do you think happens if, if he bounces? Hey, 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 When he's down, when he's down, he's bouncing with me outside. So again, just a subtle interaction. The owner calls Drogo, alerting him, but there wasn't a lot of activity in the attack. So we're going to work our way up to see what the trigger is. So you see there, Drogo sniffed him, the way he was posturing, right? <laughs> he got in between the owner with his posture, his slow posture. You know, he was giving Moshi in the body language when you watch him, like, I'm not attacking you. Don't make me do this. He was trying to puff up and intimidate Moshi a little bit with his body language. So it's fascinating to watch. And then when you hear here, the owner yell at Drogo, that was because when Drogo got out of the scenario, he went and lifted his leg and marked the stuff that was there on the side. So from the inside out, so when you're out, he bumps his head. So what do you think happens if, if he bumps his head? Hey, 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 hey. When he's down, he's, when he's down here. Telling Moshi, listen man, I didn't hurt you. I haven't done anything to you yet, and you haven't done anything crazy yet for me to do anything to you. But I'm just warning you, be careful in my house, because you're on the verge, right? <laughs> Don't make me attack you. So Drogo clearly was giving signs of dominance to Moshi to be very careful inside his house, right? or Drogo's going to have to do something about it. <laughs> I mean, so it's fascinating because Drogo never marks the house, right? He just made a statement in front of Moshi, like, why you come in here and you're messing around? You haven't crossed the line yet, right? So it's been fascinating to watch how this is playing out. Now, the next scenario, I'm going to have Moshi pick up the energy. So this next clip you see, Moshi adds a little more energy to it. Now Drogo sets off, goes up on him, poked him in the helmet, 
with his mouth. There was a, a stain on the side of his helmet from his mouth poking him in the side of the head. And there was only one little grab there from behind. So now, this is now where the psychology really, from a biting dog to fearful behavior. So there was one little grab on the back because Moshi had his back turned to Drogo. He just grabbed quick and shook a little bit and let go. When Moshi turned around and faced him and started to do this, taunt him, he backed off. only reason he bit a little bit there was because Moshi had his back turned, right? So we always talk about in protection dogs, you always have to get these dogs through attacking to the front of somebody, right? Because most dogs naturally, unless they have severe defense drive, are intimidated by the front. Right? So if you go at most dogs, they start going backwards. The moment you turn, they'll come and nip you in the back, the leg, behind. But the moment you turn around, they'll go back again. That's 99% of dogs, no matter what breed we're talking about. Okay? And you see it here from Drogo. He took one little gamble there on Moshi just quickly because Moshi was facing the other way, showing his truth right but now he's starting to get amped up enough to take a little shot to try to protect the owner but we're still seeing he's attempting but he's not following through and when Moshi turned around and did this to him ha, he backed him off right from coming forward and the frontal pressure so now things are getting a little bit heightened okay so I want Moshi to now make commotion and just go attack the owner. Here's a suit. Imagine without, flesh coming off. That's crazy. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. I don't want to get suit Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Don't stop yet. Now, <laughs> here, because of the heightened state, of that activity of the attack, it got the mind moving and it got him all going, right? This is what I was waiting for because I want to see what kind of activity level it was going to take for Drogo to, to let loose and actually really try to come and attack. Again though, when Moshi attacked, he had his back to Drogo and he got on there this time though because of the more animation it made him just click, right? So when he grabbed Moshi and started shaking, Moshi was still in a different direction. But Drogo had a little confidence because he grabbed onto him the last time a little bit and got away with it. So that actually helped this time when Drogo lost it to try to protect the owner. Now, what I want you to see here and it's very subtle and most people would never recognize it or know what just happened here. So, I'm going to put it in slow motion. What I want you to look at is fascinating how it's the defensiveness is what we call it of the dog's mind. When he grabbed Moshi and he got him into the corner and he ha had, had him when Moshi turned, you can see on the wall where his position ends up very slightly, the difference. 
that when Drogo was grabbing, when Moshi actually straightened his arm out, it made the body start to look at the mind. The moment that that happened and he took this and went flat, Drogo let go from the defensive pressure and stood there and just hovered. Right? It was so subtle, but I saw it right away when I looked at the film. Right? Exactly why he came off and why he's been attacking from the back. Because any subtlety here, right away when you put the fence on a dog who's not trained for this, he came right off and just stood Moshi off. And then Moshi was actually taunting him even. And there was no attack in return when Moshi was taunting him because Moshi was facing him in defensive pressure. Oh boy, Cody. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, oh boy, Cody's body. Okay, good boy. Oh. Right? So, dogs have a very difficult time with defensive pressure. So, again, an untrained dog in protection. Never had bite work, doesn't know anything about the protection game. So, we're testing a raw dog, but who has always considered himself a tough guy, <laughs> we consider a bully, right? But without the right tools and the right training, yeah, he bit him there, he grabbed him, but it took all those levels of us to up the, up the, up the game to get him to do this, and it was with a turn back. It was not front on right at the person, right? While the person was confronting him. That's a whole different story, right? So... All right, in the last scenario here, we're going to bring out <laughs> one of the past has brought out his most ag <laughs> aggressive states. They have a boxer that Drogo, it's like his little pet doll. If people in the past have pet her, try to play with her, he would come over, you know, sometimes go after somebody because of them messing with the boxer. So we want to bring her out now and see what happens if she joins him. What is he going to do because the boxer being out and with him is where normally his highest aggression would come out when the boxer's with him. So you're going to see here and what I want you to watch when he comes to Moshi the boxer was floating through the house, not knowing what to do yet with Moshi. But the Rottweiler came to him, and what I want you to notice is that Drogo was circling Moshi, right? Licking his lips constantly. When Moshi would stop and he'd be in the front, there was staring and just very slowness, waiting for Moshi to make a move. He was debating what he was going to do with Moshi, and he was waiting for the boxer, and then he'd lick his lips.
there was a lot of stress, tension from the dog, not knowing what to do, contemplating things, under pressure, but playing Moshi at the same time, like he was dominant, standing in front of him, you know, like he was a tough guy, posturing Moshi with that tail and that slowness and that whole body language. And Drogo now, here, that's what he was doing with Moshi. He was walking around him and trying to go to his weakness, the rear, and may have bitten him or tried him in the back, but Moshi turned to him. So that made Drogo keep turning because he wasn't getting what he wanted. He wanted Moshi's weakness in the rear if he was going to attack him. But Moshi did the right thing unintentionally and just followed him just in case he was going to attack. And then they both stopped here because Drogo figured that if he was going to keep turning with Moshi, Moshi was just going to keep blocking him off by facing him so it wasn't going to work for him. They And Drogo stopped right in front of him and just gave up on it. And that's when he did all the posturing. He was licking his lips. He was indecisive, you know, waiting for something to happen, right? So, I mean, the psychology game <laughs> that's being played out in this whole process is fascinating, right? So, now, when the boxer starts coming in now, now things are starting to get picked up because Drogo's starting to get turned on now by having the boxer there with him and the energy the boxer's bringing. And you see, the boxer was jumping in there all over the place, but never touched Moshi, right? Got up on the raw bar sometimes, got up on the suit at times, but never took a shot, never grabbed on, doesn't have the guts for that, but was trying to <laughs> have the Rottweiler think he had her support. <laughs> and she was like, get him, guy, get him. Good job. <laughs> right? Like, that's her bodyguard. But as that energy level picked up, it took Drogo a little bit. Again, Moshi was staying forward doing this, right, with a slight slant, which is not as intimidating as head on. So if Moshi would have stayed head on the whole time and done this, he never would have got attacked. Because he was sideways doing it like this, there was some threat taken off, right? But it took a while for Drogo to actually get a groove and have guts enough because he was grabbing on and letting go. Grabbing on and letting go, right? And And then eventually it got really heightened with the boxer jumping in and out that he started to grab and just held on. And then at the end, the owner was trying to call him off and the Rottweiler wouldn't let go, right? And not that the Rottweiler should, he doesn't have training, right? So just remember that, that this is not a trained dog. He has never gone through a bite press. This doesn't know what out means, right? So the, the owner was just trying to get him off Moshi if possible. To, to stop when enough was enough, right? But the Rottweiler is not fluent. He doesn't know what out means. He doesn't know how to let go of somebody in bite work. He doesn't have that training. So when you see that, don't think that, you know, he's not listening. He doesn't know how to do it. He doesn't know what Ben is talking about, right? And he's in the middle of now frantic fighting with Moshi, right? Even though it looks aggressive, he's under a stressful state now that he engaged with Moshi with that. Right? It's not true aggression. You know he's stressing. While he's shaking Moshi there and fighting him, he's caught. Just in case Moshi does something else, he's got to be, because he's not built, he's not confident in this. So he's checking the owner out, right? Not listening to him, just in case something happens with Moshi while he's on him. Because he doesn't know how to perform in the protection game. He doesn't, has no skills in that. Right? So don't think he's not listening. He has no outwork. So, I mean, it's a fascinating thing to watch and the psychology of all this, <laughs> right? From the beginning through the stages of how this all played out. One scenario, change it to another scenario and we start to heighten and heighten and heighten and heighten. So, I mean, this is one of those videos I thought was great to bring to the public for many different reasons of showing an untrained dog, 
you know, versus trained dogs, what the difference would be if you walk in or attack an owner. What would happen, you know, with the building process of trying different things and energy levels to finally make a dog try, how to back a dog off, how to make them come forward. I mean, the marking the, the stuff there to tell Moshi that, <laughs> you know, telling him through the peeing, the marking, be careful, you're on my territory, you know. So, I mean, a lot of fascinating things here. And I hope you got something out of the body language and how to present the dog if they ever come to attack you, right? So, hope you enjoyed. Till next time, Miami Dog Whisperer.